Welcome to my baby essentials video plus postpartum care tips. I am really not a fan of having a ton of stuff in my house. So from the very beginning, even with Elvis, we just really like to keep it minimal. And most of the stuff I'm gonna be showing is stuff that I bought when I was pregnant with Elvis and will be still using for baby number three. So by this time, I have found these are my favorite items that I've found essential to having a baby. This is just what works for me. This isn't necessarily gonna be the exact list of things that will work for everyone. And if this list of essentials isn't what works for you, that's totally fine. I'm just gonna share with you what I found essential and all I really need for having a baby. So the number one thing that I consider a baby essential is having a good baby carrier. Now I have found that the different baby carriers do well for different stages of life so I have a few different ones that I use mainly for like zero to six months, six months and beyond. So the first one is the Sakura Bloom ring sling or really any ring sling that works for you. This is just the one that I have and this is the same one that I had with Elvis. So I have two. I'm actually pretty baby carrying obsessed. It's pretty much the only essential item I have where I have multiple more than one other than like baby clothes obviously. You need more than one like onesie for a baby of course. But yeah so this is what I found really helpful for newborn to up to eight or nine months old. Once the baby becomes like a year old or more it's a bit heavy on the shoulders but it does really well for newborns. You can easily get the baby in super fast. You know like when your baby's crying and they want to be held it's super easy to put on. It pretty much just goes like this depending on which shoulder you want to do and you tuck baby in and you can hold your baby in a variety of different ways so when they're newborn babies you're going to hold them differently as opposed to when they're seated, sitting up. I like it when they're about six months to nine months wearing this because they can sit their little leg, like have a little sit spot and be up on your side. The one downside to the ring sling, you have limited mobility on one arm, but I have found this carrier to be the easiest to put on that helps your baby feel really snug and isn't too hot. A lot of baby carriers for newborns are quite hot and not comfortable. It's very thin material, but it's sturdy. Um, a lot of moms actually make their own ring slings. I have not done that, but if you look it up, you can figure out how to make one yourself as well. So this one is my favorite for the beginning stages and a little bit more than that. I have another carrier that I use for the beginning stages of life and this would be like a wrap material. This one is by Chico Baby Carriers and this one is an even easier type of wrap to make yourself if you're good at doing this type of thing. <laughs> these are the pros and cons to, the, to these two different carriers. The pros about this one is that oh my gosh it's the material is super super snug but not hot. It's very thin and but it will keep your baby warm against your chest and it's perfect for newborns. When you wrap your baby into it, it's perfect for newborns because of how snug they are. And you still have both arms for mobility, so that is gonna be the plus to using this one as opposed to the ring sling. The downside is that it takes quite a bit of effort and time to figure out how to use them and wrap them properly, and it takes longer to put on. The ring sling, you just slip over your shoulder, slip your baby in, you're really good to go. After just a month or two, you'll get the hang of it like so easy. But I found the wraps, the actual wraps, where you have to tie and wrap and go like this and make sure you get the right get on up there and all that type of thing and then you have to get the other side and do you get what I'm saying like it takes kind of a while to get the hang of it but once you do get the hang of it it's super comfy so if you're gonna be out for like a few hours it's super comfy for baby to sleep in and become second nature if you do it a lot it just takes a, it just takes a bit of effort to put on a little bit more than the ring sling but these are perfect for newborns big babies though definitely this type of material at least wraps are not my favorite. I've tried the thicker wraps that do well for um, older babies, but I just found the thick wrap material to be too hot, especially where we live. And also my babies weren't comfortable in them as they got older, but they really liked the, these thin ones and they were little, little babies. And the other reason is just because of the effort it takes to put on. Now, when my baby gets bigger, once they have good head control, I am all about the buckle carriers. Especially the Tula is my favorite, but Ergo is a great one as well. These type of buckle carriers often have newborn inserts that you can use if you just want to get one carrier but I found them again to be too stuffy too hot and often especially talking to other moms as well um, a lot of my other mom friends agreed that their babies just weren't comfortable in the newborn inserts that go with a buckle carrier like this so I save this for once my baby has good m head mobility so the reason why I like these buckle carriers is because they're so easy to put on it's literally just wrap it around and snap. Won't well, snap right now because I have a huge belly right now with a baby inside. <laughs> My babies have all been super comfortable in them. Six 
months or so all the way up to like three years even sandy andrew was wearing sandy in this the other day once they get a bit older you can wear them on your back you have both arms free either way all right so that's it for the carriers the next thing that i consider essential for a minimalist way to save money and have a lighter footprint on the planet is cloth diapers Definitely, I am all about cloth diapers. I have used them for all three of my children and you literally save so much money and avoid so much unneeded waste in the landfill. And I totally get if it's not for everyone, but for me, I love cloth diapers. Buying an entire set of cloth diapers can range from anywhere $100 if you're buying secondhand on Craigslist or something like that, all the way up to like $400 or $500 depending on the type of cloth diapers that you get. Now, I have an entire video on cloth, cloth diapering that I'll link in the description box below telling about the different types of cloth diapers and to figure out what works for you. So these are Bum Genius all-in-one pocket cloth diapers. I love so much my favorite cloth diapers for sure. These Bum Genius ones have lasted me forever. The next baby essential that I'm all about are muslin cloth blankets, receiving blankets, whatever you want to call them. These blankets are so wonderful not only for swaddling your baby or for just wrapping your baby up to help cuddle them, but they're also great for burp cloths. They're great for leaky breasts in the beginning stages when you're nursing and just having them there to help soak up any kind of leaking milk. They're great for a variety of reasons. Yeah, I don't know what I'd do without my receiving blankets. These are essential for me. So there's all different kinds of brands. I prefer to buy organic cotton and they're super sturdy and durable. And we actually also use these to take to the beach. Instead of bringing like three or four huge beach towels, we often bring just a couple of these to just to dry the kids off after the beach. Super lightweight and dries really fast. Okay, the next baby essential that I consider essential for our family is either a co-sleeper or a baby lounger that lays on the bed with you. So we had a co-sleeper that we used for Elvis and we used it for Sandy as well but this time around in our room we don't have very much space in our room to set up a co-sleeper for my other two kids we used for the first six months of their life what we did that worked really well for us is to start our baby at night in the co-sleeper next to the bed and then once he woke up the first time I brought him into bed to sleep with me the rest of the night. That just worked well for us because then if we started our baby in the co-sleeper at night and then we still, we weren't ready to go to bed yet, we could go out of the room and then when we were ready to go to bed, we could easily climb into bed without waking the baby up because we're like crawling on the bed and that type of thing. So that's why the co-sleeper worked really well for us. But this time around, we don't have space, any enough space in our room to fit a co-sleeper because I have my work desk in our bedroom now. So what we got instead is this thing called a Snuggle Me Organic Lounger. And we are gonna try this out and see how it goes. I have a really good feeling about it. So it's basically like a lounger that you can lay your baby in that will keep them snug and that way they're not as easily disrupted by movement in the bed. So you can lay this on your bed while you sleep next to your baby. So this is what we're gonna go for this time. I'll let you know how it goes in the future, but I have a really good feeling about it and it's organic and yeah, so that's what we're doing for that. Also that works a baby up to six months old and after that anyways, we tend to sleep with our babies until they're old enough and want to sleep in their own room. And I totally get that co-sleeping is not for everybody. Every baby is different and it just depends on both you and how you sleep and how your baby sleeps. Okay, the next baby essential is a breast pump. I got this when I was pregnant with Elvis. So it's the Medela breast pump. It's the professional grade one that has two breast pumps so you can pump both breasts at the same time. Now, I don't use the pump for my babies. I breastfeed my babies on my breast. I use the breast pump so that I can pump extra milk and donate it to other mothers in need who need extra breast milk. I've always had a lot of breast milk with both of my babies, way more than I need, and I found it very easy to pump every day for about 10 minutes in the morning, and I would get about 10 ounces of extra breast milk that I can donate to another mother in need. With Sandy, I donated over 4,000 ounces of breast milk, which is super awesome because if I had a situation where I needed help with breast milk or extra breast milk to feed my baby I would be so thankful if another mother did share their extra breast milk with me so I find it really valuable and something that we should do more often and encourage each other to do if we have extra breast milk and the time to share and if you're inspired to do this even the World Health Organization recommends that babies be breastfed for at least the first two years of life says the second best option to breast milk from a baby's own mother is breast milk from another mother yeah I find like if we can build up a community to where it's super common 
common to share milk for each other's babies, that would be amazing and I'm all for that. So I'm really excited to donate again this time around. With Elvis though, I originally got it to give to my baby when I was working because I did work part time. I went back to work part time a few months after Elvis was born. So I would pump at work. I actually used to work at a restaurant. It was very awkward because they didn't have an actual breast pumping station which legally every place of business, at least in California, was supposed to have, but the restaurant I worked at didn't have that. So I actually pumped milk in the manager's office and it was quite awkward, but I did it and I'm so glad that I did it. It was totally worth the, worth the effort. I was only working about 15, 20 hours a week, but in order to keep my milk supply up, I found pumping my milk super important and then I had the extra milk to give to Elvis the next time that I went to work and I had a freezer full of pumped milk and it helped keep my milk supply up. In regards to me as a stay-at-home mom, I do breastfeed my babies just from my breast and I use the pump to pump extra milk to donate to other mothers in need. Now the next essential that I have is something that just personally works for me and I know that it doesn't work for everyone and not everyone necessarily recommends swaddling your baby at night, but I have found these Ergo, ba Ergo Baby swaddles to be so essential for my babies when it comes to sleeping. You can use a muslin cloth blanket to swaddle your baby, but I have found it really hard to get the knack of it to make sure the baby stays swaddled because they can unravel themselves really quickly. But these Ergo Baby swaddles are specifically meant for helping your baby stay swaddled and wrap it around and there's like Velcro to keep it and there's like a little thing that goes over it. I'm really butchering explaining this. <laughs> but some babies don't like to be swaddled though. Some babies do. Some people think you shouldn't swaddle your baby. Some people think you should. So whatever works for you, I really love these. There's like a large size and a, and a small size, but I really only used it for the first like six months. All right, the, pretty much the last baby essential is secondhand clothing for your baby. I really don't spend much money on new clothes for my babies. Uh, hardly ever. I think I've only bought like two or three items brand new. I tend to purchase secondhand or I get them secondhand from friends who have babies. Or there is this one brand that I really love to support and she's a stay-at-home mama and she makes baby clothing out of upcycled contha blankets and I am just in love with her brand. She has these adorable little bloomers that fit over perfectly over cloth diapers and these pants like are you kidding me? She's amazing. So I love to support her. Her Instagram is called Fox and the Traveling Gypsy. I'll put a link to her in the description box of the video. But so yeah that's like the one clothing brand that I'm like super obsessed with and I love but other than that I pretty much just use secondhand clothing and I have the same baby clothes that I had for Elvis yeah colors really don't matter to me so even if we have a girl I'm not about to go oh man I need to go run out and buy a bunch of pink clothes that's just not something I feel compelled to do and you can always have like a baby clothing swap with your friends if you have friends who have had babies before you or after you or whatever and you can just kind of share baby clothing get together bring all the baby clothes that you don't need anymore and just share the clothing or you can find it online as well on Craigslist free baby clothes secondhand baby clothes all that type of stuff because they grow out of the clothes so fast it's just not really worth it to buy brand new baby clothes yeah there's very few times where I get like something brand new of clothing for babies every once in a while but for the most part I get baby clothes and baby socks secondhand. Now the last thing I wanted to touch on is that I am not huge at all on the big baby gadgets like those huge gadgets that have all these bright colored plastic toy things for them to chime at and sit in and bounce in and stroll in. I'm not a fan of those. They take up a ton of space and I feel like they add unneeded stimulus to babies when really they are so happy to just be looking up into the sky or to be looking at you while you're cooking and that type of thing. But I will say there is one gadget that I have really appreciated with my other two and I'm pretty positive I'm gonna want it again for this one. As simple as I can find, bouncer. With my other two I got them on Craigslist and then I just gave them away after I was done on Craigslist after. It's actually really nice to have a little type of lounge, lounger bouncer to where they can just sit up and see you as opposed to being laying down. Most of the time I am baby wearing but there are certain times where baby wearing is not convenient or you're cooking hot food and your baby's right there and you really would like to set your baby down and I found that a really simple little bouncer lounger, not one with a ton of gadgets like distracting them, not one that makes noise or, or vibrates or anything like that, just something simple that can prop them up is really nice to have in the first like three to six 
seven months or so because after after that they kind of get don't want to be in it and they want to crawl around yeah for the beginning before they're crawling it's really really nice to have and if you can only find secondhand bouncers or loungers that have all the gadgety stuff you can always take them off and just not turn on the vibrating part or not turn on the music and that type of thing or you can turn it on and leave the gadgety stuff whatever works for you but I've just found I like keeping it really simple so that is pretty much it for baby essentials other than the obvious like car seat but literally that's all that I want for me and my baby so I actually tell people not to buy us gifts because I don't want having extra stuff I like to keep things minimal in my house and yeah that's pretty much it now I'm excited to move on to the postpartum tips part I feel like sometimes women who get birth are not given some tips that can be really helpful for postpartum healing for postpartum emotional support for postpartum breastfeeding all that type of thing so I just want to give you a couple tips that I have found monumentally helpful for me after I give birth. The first one I want to say is that after you've given birth, if you've had a vaginal birth for postpartum healing, I especially found it helpful when I gave birth to Elvis because I did tear a little bit when I gave birth to Elvis, so it was more painful. With Sandy, after three days, I was totally fine not in any kind of pain postpartum if you did tear when you gave birth what can be really helpful is freezing a maxi pad because you'll be bleeding but freezing freeze a maxi pad and then when you're ready to put it on take it out of the freezer and put on witch hazel drizzle it all over the pad it soothes it it helps lessen pain and it's so comfortable and super amazing now my next tip is for breastfeeding if you feel mastitis coming on in any way either go to my blog post and check out my tips for helping to prevent mastitis or you can google search mastitis um, how to prevent mastitis if you feel any kind of like mastitis might be coming on or learning about what it is you want to nip it in the butt right away so that you d it doesn't turn into full-on mastitis something that I found really helpful is this tincture called happy ducks so it's by Wish Garden, and it's really helpful in regards to preventing mastitis. If you're having pain, it helps with that as well. And the next one, if this is your first baby, it's unlikely that you're gonna have postpartum cramping. For the most part, postpartum cramping happens with the second baby and gets worse with each baby. So I actually had no idea that there was such a thing as postpartum cramping. It literally feels like a contraction, and it happens most often when you start to breastfeed your baby and it's your uterus contracting, and it feels like a contraction and with each child I've heard it gets worse and worse. My friend who just gave birth to her fifth child told me that with each baby it has gotten progressively worse and worse but I recommended to her that she get this Wish Garden After Ease, which helps for cramping, which I took when I had Sandy, because I had Sandy and I started getting these postpartum cramping. I'm like, what is this? My husband went online. He ordered this for me right away, this really awesome herbal tincture that helps to relieve pain from postpartum cramping. It did wonders. It literally stops the pain in like 30 seconds, but it doesn't stop your body from contracting your uterus. It still lets your body do all the job of contracting your uterus in a healthy way, but it minimizes and even stops the pain so I got one for my friend who just gave birth to her fifth child and she also said it did wonders for her so it's not just me so I highly recommend this if you're having your second child or more so so helpful and I'm really glad I have it this time around so you pretty much just take the tincture as soon as you feel a cramp coming on and that's when you'll notice the effects postpartum tea to help with your healing to help your uterus contracting and this is a tea mixture that my midwife recommended for Sandy and I took it for four to six weeks after Sandy was born I drank a whole quart a day of it and I'm really glad I did. I found it super helpful. It's shepherd's purse, nettle leaf, raspberry leaf tea, and dandelion root. If you don't have a loose leaf tea shop near you where you can get in bulk types of teas, you can still go to your local organic grocery store and there should be postpartum tea available and it should have a very similar mix of ingredients. All right, my next postpartum tips aren't really anything in specifically to buying anything, but it's just tips for you after you give birth. If this is your first baby or if you've already had a child and you're going to be giving birth again, but you had a lot of struggles breastfeeding the first time around highly recommend you check out my blog post called tips for successful breastfeeding I spent so many hours on this blog post that I wrote when Sandy was a baby I literally just gathered all the knowledge I had taken from my midwives from other friends from all the research I've done tips that have helped me personally to help me to be 
successful at breastfeeding, I highly recommend that you read it before you give birth and also read it after you give birth. So many women have come to me saying that this blog post has helped them to be successful at breastfeeding, that they were almost gonna give up, but the tips helped get them on track to be able to be successful. Because the reality is, is that most women can breastfeed if they are given the right support. So many women are not given proper support, especially in the beginning when you need so much care and support because you're healing your own body. So you need people to take care of you so that you can focus on taking care of your baby and figuring out breastfeeding with your baby. Now obviously there are all different kinds of reasons why women are not able to breastfeed and I have so much sympathy for that or even if they choose not to breastfeed this is not any kind of talk about trying to say that everybody should be able to do it and it's so easy because it's not. I have found breastfeeding, especially with my first child, super hard. Just trying to figure it out takes a lot of work and effort. There were some definitely some pitfalls, some ups and downs where I'm like, what is happening now? What's going on with my nipples and all that type of thing. Yeah, so I pretty much give tips on how to have good milk supply, to be emotionally supported, are in a struggle, what certain things can mean if certain things aren't going right, if the baby's not latching properly, or if you're you feel like your milk supply is going down all that type of thing. I also talk about donating breast milk, which I highly encourage you to do, which I've talked before, if you do have extra breast milk to share and if you have the time to be able to pump and of course if you're inspired to do it. Consider donating breast milk to others in need so that we can all support each other and you can go to humanmilkforhumanbabies.net. If you are a mother who will end up needing to supplement in some way, check out humanmilkforhumanbabies.net where you can find the Facebook location nearest you and you can connect with other mothers in your area that have extra milk to share. And the more that mothers who have extra milk share, the more likely that the mothers who need milk will be able to get it. All right, so my next tip is after you give birth, you do not have to hand over your baby to anyone. When you get home, if you have a bunch of visitors coming in, just for me personally, I really value my privacy, especially in those beginning weeks because you just literally did the biggest marathon of your life giving birth, whether you had a cesarean, whether you had a natural birth and a vaginal birth, or whether you had a traumatic birth or even a very smooth birth, it is still very impactful on your body and it takes a lot of rest and care for the mother as well as bonding with your baby and it's really important to take care of yourself and to not worry so much about what others want. So I've seen this all too often, talk to so many people where family, friends are intruding or hosting parties at your house when you just gave birth and you're like, I just wanna be alone in your room and I just encourage you to put your foot down and let your let yourself have privacy. If you have a partner, ask for support, of course. Actually, my midwives, all of them, especially my first one, I'll never forget when I was pregnant, I didn't really know what to expect or what I would be thinking after I gave birth, but she told me, she said, don't let anyone in your house for the first four weeks unless they're bringing you food or they're doing your laundry. And I was like, really? And she's like, yes. Put a sign on your door, say, we are sleeping, do not knock. <laughs> because honestly, people shouldn't be coming to your house when you first gave birth for to meet your baby. It's not for them. It's it's for you, to be taking care of you. Have a friend start a meal train. Having meals brought to you in those first couple weeks especially is really helpful because it's exhausting. You know, you're not going to be getting as much sleep and you're healing from birth. You shouldn't be up walking around. I found it very appreciative to have friends come and drop off meals. Every time I go to drop off a meal at a friend who's just have a baby, I never stay too long. I don't ask to hold the baby because I honestly don't want to hold the brand new baby, especially with all the bonding your baby is doing with you, you don't need those extra senses and smells from other people because your baby should be focused on like connecting with you and that helps a lot with your bonding experience that your baby gets to stay with you. So this is just like something I found really helpful. We literally put a sign on the door when Elvis was born and said like privacy please or something like I don't remember what we said exactly but it was something that really didn't encourage people to just come knocking and want to come see the baby. Like of course my parents came to visit but you know what my mom pretty much came and dropped off food or she would come and help me clean and she would help me with things so that I was able to take care of the baby. She didn't come to hold my baby so I could go clean. She came to clean for me so I could hold my baby. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is kind of a tip for if you're not having a baby, but you know someone who's having a baby, you can totally bring them a meal and then just, you know, respect that they likely will need a lot of rest because it's exhausting to try to have too many conversations and all that stuff. Yeah, and when people do come into your house or if you do have family members who wanna hold your baby and stuff, just ask them to wash their hands or just remind them. Most of the time, they're probably gonna wanna wash their hands anyways. Just don't ever feel like you have to hand your baby over to someone 
when you don't want to. Obviously, if you're giving birth in a hospital, sometimes it can be different, but if you have proper care and support from a partner or doula, depending on the circumstance, like if the baby is all healthy, help ensure that you get your baby right away. But if you're having a hospital birth, I'm mainly talking about after the hospital to when you're at home and people want to come visit you and your baby. For those first few weeks, three, four, five, sometimes even six weeks, if you have a lot of healing to do, don't be afraid to just keep your privacy because that's really important for your bonding experience and to help with your milk supply as well. I'm so grateful grateful for my family and friends for all that they do for me when I have given birth and I'm so thankful for how much they love and care about my new baby and all that type of stuff and of course once the baby gets a little bit older after you heal and you start going out and about a little bit more of course I let people hold my baby of course but in the beginning um, sometimes if you just feel that instinct like you want to be holding your baby or your baby's sleeping you don't need to wake up your baby to have someone who comes to visit to hold your baby and all that the next thing which is kind of in conjunction with this with letting people take care of you is also let your partner take care of you if you have a partner if you aren't with a partner see if you can have a family member or friend come and help you and take care of you rest 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 as much as you can I cannot stress this enough the more you rest the quicker your body will heal honestly I asked for my husband to get me glasses of water he makes all my food in the beginning he helps me with anything that I need I don't pick up heavy things the, the heaviest thing I'll pick up is up to the size of my baby and I think this is something that a lot of people just don't know about or aren't uh, a lot of women just aren't told how important it is to rest and to not to push your body too soon for I'll give you an example with Sandy I didn't tear at all with Sandy so I had literally after two or three days I had no pain no soreness down in my vagina everywhere felt so good I, I could sit on my bottom and feel amazing I felt energized I had energy my emotional stability was wonderful and so I thought okay the house is kind of disorganized I'm kind of like an organization freak Andrew is more the deep cleaner and I am more the person that likes things to be organized so I had seen a bunch of things just that needed to be put away so I think I was like four days postpartum and I'm like you know what I'm just gonna get up and walk around and just put stuff away so I started to like put things away picking up clothes picking up food picking up toys and that type of thing and then I realized shortly after that that was not a good idea because I had done too much much activity that my before my body was ready even though I felt like I felt like I was fine my midwives had told me like rest 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 for the first few weeks like definitely don't push yourself just lay in bed be with your baby and rest yeah I could definitely tell because the postpartum bleeding got stronger this is just a, s a couple of signs especially if you have exhaustion or bleeding getting worse that that is a sign you're doing too much too soon one more thing I want to say if you're looking for a frugal way to do baby essentials highly recommend checking out my friend Amber her YouTube channel is called the fairly local vegan she has a video which is a similar topic to this one about baby essentials and it's about being frugal as well so like she has tons of tips on how to make every single thing baby essential to be zero waste and getting second hand and all that type of stuff she's super inspiring she talked about a few more things that I didn't mention um, that she found really helpful so check out her video if you'd like more information on getting baby stuff super cheap minimally frugally truly is that a word frugal in a frugal way she's really awesome so I'll put the link to her specific video that was about this topic in the description box below as well her video was really great that's everything I hope you found this helpful I got some emails of women wanting me to make a video like this so yeah I was excited to share it and I hope you found it helpful I'm sure I didn't cover everything but this is just the stuff that came to my mind about postpartum tips as well as baby essentials and if these things weren't for you then that is great I am not telling everyone to do it my way or anything this is just what works for me that's it all right bye